Hello everyone, happy Sunday. Hope you are having a good day. Um, my name is Sophia. Um, so I've been um, meaning to uh, unload this for a while now since what has happened in the last few weeks in the USA on uh, the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis while in police custody and the subsequent protests and riots which has triggered a conversation on racial inequality and social justice around the world and how to address it. So um, for long I worked in an industry that confronts the issues of justice, equality, accountability, ethics and whatnot in my career. Uh, moreover, I have faced those same issues many times in my life and have publicly challenged them. Um, I've also written what amounts to thousands of uh, papers and public opinion articles on these subjects. So I thought the issue merited few comments from me. Now I understand uh, the only way that I have accepted the killing of George Floyd, at least based on the visuals captured by the video, which was enough for me, is that it was murder. Less that video, of course, as we know it, uh, the man's life would have gone unaccounted for. So when I first saw the video, I thought it was one of those films I was watching on Netflix. Shocking. I had never in my whole life seen a man or anyone murdered in front of me. I just experienced a reality check that this happened in modern day America, the America that I love, the America that I respected. I recall I did not attend to my work for a few days after. My mind was frozen. It was shocking and unbearable experience for me. I even had nightmares on it, as if trying to rid the officer from the victim's neck, right? And I keep taking deep breaths myself as if also I can't breathe. So as the events unfolded, I also wondered what the officer would be thinking like the opposite of what he did happened uh, or what he expected, which was to humiliate this man in front of the onlookers who were telling him to stop. He was acting as if the victim's life did not really matter and seemed to act to the crowd he has the fact and the power over that. And then by doing nothing, but justice paved her way swiftly to show him George Floyd's life did matter, even more so his death mattered more and was not in vain. So this is how I saw it. First of all, Floyd's justice was served immediately in that the video was there to avenge his murder. And second, the two week public protest and riots was also a wake up call for America on racial justice but that served the Floyd and family very well. And third, his funeral was highly televised, right? With the world watching, like as if some sort of, he was some sort of a murderer, right? Or a royalty. Add to that, he was laid next to his mom, who he was calling for during his last breath. That was some solemn moment. And justice showed its face in different forms. I'm sure the officer's life has also changed forever already, but. You know, it's all a tragedy. And then there was the prominent voices that touched my feelings and provoked many experiences I may have encountered myself. I've been posting these quotes and videos from this, uh, from the voices on my Instagram page and social media. I also went out during the protest in my neighborhood, which I've never done before, and rallied the protesters. It felt good, really good. And the powerful words of Reverend Al Sharpton were my favorite, notably, is it's a different time and a different season, reminding us that this was like in the 2020s now. And then his remarks on get your knees off our necks, that was so poetic, but also very true. Also the comments made by Trevor Noah, reminding us that the government's social contract with the public regarding the riots and their legitimacy a subject I wrote and heavily argued about in the public long ago, 
when I got into a wrangle with a government contract, which was unfairly awarded to a competitor. Although I won my argument and contract back, it was sad to learn at the end of that struggle, maybe nine months or so, that I was a victim of sexism, gender bias, and so forth, whatever. I can say I've never really experienced such level of criminal racial injustice, that of George Floyd, but I have come across the face of injustice in light of my gender, gender or color discrimination, and I've certainly called it out loud in public. I resort to public opinion, which is much more fair and honest than an institution that you challenge. And of course, there were occasions when I also got my justice, thank God, and at times when it's really delayed. Indeed, the George Floyd tragedy has sparked not only the need for police or criminal justice reform, but also brought home the need to have fresh conversations on the systematic discrimination and disempowerment of blacks and African Americans all over the world from rising through society. There's always that subtle treatment of black space and white space in social settings as we know it. Personally, it struck a chord for me immediately when the Black Lives Matter protest uh, took place. It took me down to memory lane when I first came to the US, though I am now confident to respond to such issues. You know those forms that everyone has to fill out at the various institutions, be it uh, the university we enroll or a doctor's visit, applying for a loan or a job? You know, those forms require us to check if we were black, white, Latino, Asian, Middle East, etc. And then there is another box called Other. As they were, as if they were developing some other color or race, I used to think. I recall initially I used to be very confused and wonder how rude it was also to ask. Well, that's because I grew up in a monoculture and did not experience that. So I then used to check the box other and say, let them ask me if they want. Sort of a rebellion. I could have easily checked the box that says black since I'm a woman of color, but I was fearful on how I was going to be treated, right? Because the reputation I gathered was that blacks were not treated right in the US. And so I did not want to derail my future opportunities at the young age. So I thought it was, if I was confronted to be questioned on the box that I checked as other, which happens rarely by a human being, I expected to look directly into their eye and say, well, I'm from Northeast Africa. Do you know where that is? Now that will, correct, that will be correct, but it's a bit complicated for the handling clerks to get the debate of race and color and how I fit in that form. But they never bothered because I know, uh, they probably know why I did not check that box in. Anyway. So when IBM announced the other day it was no longer gonna manufacture facial recognition software in advancement of racial justice, I was thinking these forms should also be considered in the same vein as racial profiling and should be dealt with. In any case, despite all these challenges, I've always lived in an upscale suburb, city suburb, where I feel safe and I've spent most of the last 20 years of my career life in an international entrepreneurship lifestyle where I had nearly traveled over 150 countries globally. So I feel privileged. Yet, I still experience racism and gender bias as I move around together. And together that seems a bit too much to unload. And there's always has its time and occasions. Particularly when I try to actualize my dream or ambition. There are those who think I am simply in their way. Or as the Reverend said, would like to have their knees on my neck if not to stop me from breathing, but to exhaust me enough so I don't get up again. But I don't allow all these negative experiences to change my attitude or take my power or purpose or hurt my feelings. I don't allow others to define who I am. I never did. I always push, P-U-S-H, persist until something happens. To get what I want or live the way I want, no one should stop me or you from achieving our dreams. 
Finally, this is the time for humanity to raise our moral consciousness at a minimum, based on the lesson learned from the past few months, both on the COVID-19 global pandemic, as well as um, the race relations around the world. Also on the whole topic of defunding the police, well, I doubt that is the best solution. I think low security is equivalent to bad security. I think the call for defunding has already made its point and it has helped galvanize people against the police brutality, but it can't bring about the required change that's needed. Things like um, things like, uh, let's say, domestic violence have to be dealt with. But there's definitely a need to reform the entire criminal justice system to hold police officers accountable and also investigate their own behavior, and not only the victims. That's what I like to see. I was also surprised to hear police officers have immunity from the system. Now that's wrong. It's similar to diplomats in international organizations that use their immunity to do bad, and they do bad, and we know many of those from experience. Also, I think there needs to be a priority in dealing with the economic divide of African American and blacks, and blacks in the US and around the world. Poverty would always breed violence. If we don't know that, we're living in a bubble. The riots were also a backlash against that and signified a major part of this divide. I recall attending a World Affairs Council meeting in San Francisco at the end of last year on the status of women in the Bay Area, where I was shocked to learn that a McKenzie report disclosed that black women have the lowest numbers in attaining um, C-level executive positions in every industry. I recall blogging about that. I was shocked. I was even, <laughs> I've been away from corporate America 15 years and it's like nothing has changed. All these statistics attest to the resistance to not allow others to come into the so-called white space. The now immediate response by top US companies like Amazon, Uber, and Google, and now IBM, including banks and others, standing in solidarity with the Black Lives Matters theme and rush to develop programs to address economic and racial inequality is very positive welcome. However, we all hope to see it's not a lip service and, and a and a wanting to trend, we expect a measurable outcome. Finally, I hope justice will be served properly for Floyd and his family by the court system. He has already received his justice in the eye of the public opinion. That's also because the crime was committed on camera. So let us do better. Let's do just with each other, even when we're not on camera. Let's love, faith, and hope abide and prevail. So that's my slant on this subject. Hope it helps the conversation. Please add your say and your part so our voice is stronger together. Peace and keep safe. Thank you.